we're going to talk about air tightness. Passive House Institute looks at air tightness purely on the point of view of a energy basis. At the FIAS, they take a view of durability issue. As we talked about, air going into the, the assembly can really create problems. And so I'm going to illustrate it here. This is a little complicated, but I'm trying to make it simple. Cubes, simple problem, 24, 24, 24, 48, 48, 48, 96, 96, 96, 96 right? Three different buildings, home, small office building, multifamily building. And the Pass House Institute in Germany is 0.6 CFM 50, well, CFM 50 is cubic feet per minute at 50 Pascal, so that's the pressurization. You blow up the envelope with air and you see how much air is leaking out. 0.6 is based on the net volume, okay? So a 0.6 net volume calculation would say, okay, on the small cube, I, need not, I can go up to 92 CFM. On the mid-sized cube, I go up to 911. And on the larger cube, I can go up to 8,043 based on the net volume. Now, the Passwell Institute in the US says, no, it's a 0 0.05 CFM 50 per envelope area. So what the Passwell Institute says is, you know, this is mostly durability issue first. It's an, it's an energy issue second. So it says, depending on how much air is leaking through that envelope, that's going to affect durability. So it says that you take all six sides of the envelope and you figure out how much square footage of envelope area there is, and then you are allowed 0 0.05 CFM. And the reason they came up with that is they commissioned a study of all the climate zones, and then 0 0.05 CFM was a safe zone for all climate zones. And basically, there are climate zones that you can leak more than this and you'll still be safe. And I know that at FIAS, one of the goals is to have a climate specific air tightness requirement, but it hasn't happened yet. So right now it's kind of fixed. And why is this an issue? Well, for years, we have a specification that we send out in our projects that says, if your building is under this amount of uh, or cubic footage, you do a volume test. And if it's over this amount of uh, footage, you do, a, you do a square foot area test. In Germany, one ancient protocol man that says that if you get over a certain size building, you're supposed to do a square foot calculation, not a volume calculation. Because what happens, it, it's interesting, the small cube at the 0 0.05 CFM 50, it allows up to 172 CFM of leakage area for that small guy, right? Because at 92, which is your 0.6 CFM, which is the uh, Pass House Institute Germany's metric, that's only 0.027 leakage per square foot of envelope area. That's a tight building. That is super duper tight. So if you say, okay, well, if I go to 0 0.05, which I know is safe, I can get up to 172. So in this, in this way, these smaller buildings actually get a little easier. Now, the problem is not only is it durability, it's also energy. So when you add the energy factor in there, a lot of times you go back to something like this to get your energy low enough. Now, but what ends up happening is you can see here, as you get to that middle size, you're allowed 911, you, but by this, now it's 691, so fairly close. But when you get to the big buildings, this is where you really start looking at it. 8,000 versus 2,700. On a volumetric calculation, as your buildings get larger, they get much leakier. As they get much leakier, you have a greater potential for failure, depending on where the leaks are. 